Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and let's worship the Lord. God, you're worthy today. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Yes, you are. Lord, oh, yes. Shout it out. We shout your name, Jesus. We make your praise, glorious. You are glorious. Oh Lord, you are. My God, you reign.
sing it. Shout it out and glory. Warriors, come sing. Shout it out and Jesus, we shout your name. Jesus, Jesus, we make hey. our praise. Oh, Warriors, you are glorious. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Brother Landon to come. Actually, he has been scheduled for the last two or three weeks to preach on a Wednesday night, and he's been uh, real sick, but I've asked him to come and address the church, say uh, whatever is on his heart, and I want him to come right now and just uh, speak to you from his heart to yours uh, for a moment of time and just receive him with saying amen, amen, amen. Can you do that? God bless you, brother. seated. Firstly, I would like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for your continued loyalty and faithfulness to this church following the passing of our pastor, James Kirk. I thank you for the support, the love, the kindness that you've shown my family, my mother, and myself. And if I know anything about James Kirk, I know he would be incredibly proud of the way that you have handled the situation that has been handed to us in the recent months. And for all these things, I honor you today. A new year set upon us, and also a new mission has set upon us. Our mission for 2017 is to reach this city in a way we've never done before. This is our year to baptize more than ever before. This is our year to see more filled with the Holy Ghost than ever before. This is our year for more Bible studies taught than ever before. This is the year for our church to grow exponentially. And I tell you today, if you want to run a church of a thousand members, we just got to keep pushing on, doing what we know to do, and we're going to do it. It's our year. It's our year to see the sick healed. It's our year to see blind eyes open. It's our year to see the lame get up and walk. It is our year. Fix your eyes on the author and the finisher of our faith. I know what the next chapter holds. I trust the author. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you, 2017 will be a year of restoration and revival. Let's get a hold of God this year in a way we've never done before. We've pressed on. Now let's roll. Let's roll. In the name of Jesus, church, let's roll in 2017. Come on, if you believe that today, why don't you exalt the Lord in this place? Thank you, Jesus. God, you are glorious. Amen and amen. You may be seated for just a couple moments, and uh, we are so thankful 
for you being here today, and we say uh, welcome. If you're a guest and a visitor of our service here today, we welcome you out uh, to Christian Life Center on this beginning of a new year. We're thankful that you have chosen to be with us, and we encourage uh, you to come back and be with us throughout the entire year. We are uh, we're a church family, and we just love to uh, add to that family. We love it when the family grows. Now, I'll be honest on the natural. Uh, I'm not much for family reunions and getting with uh, especially maybe some of the extended family. But when it comes to the church family, I love it when the family of God gets together and the people of God come together to worship God. And we're glad that you are here this morning. I want to do something uh, special this morning. I want to say uh, to Brother Landon, thank you. We received that word this morning for the church. We received that as words of faith and encouragement. And I believe God is going to just continue to pour his presence and spirit out on us here. There's something new we're beginning in the year of 2017. And just a few weeks ago, uh, each and every year, we have a bowling league that uh, kicks off. And they have a great time, uh, probably more of fellowship than they do of uh, professional bowler status. But uh, they have a great time uh, that they get together. And at the end of every season, the bowling alley gives back a portion of the money to go back into the church. And uh, uh, Brother John Kiefer, which kind of heads up uh, the, the bowling uh, league, he had come to Bishop and I uh, a few weeks ago and had talked about wanting to begin and establish a uh, Pastor James Kirk Memorial Scholarship Fund. And they have taken this first check that they have received as seed money into that scholarship fund. And I'm going to ask Bishop if he would come up. Brother John Jr., are you in here? If you'll come up and grab a picture real quick. We're going to present this to Bishop Kirk. And again, this is seed money that is going into a scholarship fund in honor of our pastor. And uh, as this fund will continue to grow, and you're going to hear more about it throughout the year. And Pastor James was always about furthering education and encouraging people to move on and better themselves in this life. And Brother John uh, Kiefer and, and, and them in the bowling league wanted to get this started by donating this $375 check to be the very first into this memorial scholarship fund. So, Bishop, we're going to present this to you. Amen. And that is going to go, and that is going to be the beginning of something great here at Christian Life Center. And we encourage you. Uh, you'll, you'll hear more about that, and you'll know about how that you can be part of a great extension into this ministry of helping our young people and those that are moving on in education to further their education. I'm going to ask you to stand one more time. New Year's Day 2017. What a great day it is. We enjoyed such a wonderful mighty presence of God in this place last night. It's always, as we said last night, it's a it's a, one of those life-changing type services where if you will allow God to speak into you in a time of communion, in a time of dedication and consecration to God, God will change your life. And I am thankful for our service last night. But we stand today upon the threshold of a brand new year, and we are looking forward to what God is going to do. Judges of the 16th chapter we're going to read verses 21 and 22. And if you will hold that, we're also going to move into Daniel, the third chapter, and begin reading at verse number 16 there. And as you're looking for that, again, we want to say uh, to each and every one of our guests and also to Patty and, uh, and, and, and the family that's here all the way from Colorado, thank you for being with us here this morning. i uh, excited about that. Judges, the 16th chapter, verse number 21. But the Philistines took him put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass and he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. This is the story of Samson. If you'll turn to Daniel the third chapter, we'll begin reading at verse number 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom, is, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. To very familiar stories here this morning. 
And I want to, for the next few minutes of time, speak to you from this thought, an anthem from the ashes. An anthem from the ashes. If you'll lay your Bibles down, we're going to ask the Lord to bless us here today through his word. God, we thank you this morning. God, many that have gathered in this house, Lord, and we have started this new year in your presence, Lord, and I, I believe that you're going to just speak words of encouragement and hope into us, Lord, and I believe that the word of God is going to minister in a powerful, mighty way, oh God, and I believe that you're going to touch lives and encourage and bless us here today. I pray that as the word comes forth that we will respond in like to you, oh God, and give you glory and give you praise this morning. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You may be seated. These are different kind of services. I'll say right here at the onset, anytime you have a holiday, uh, last week Christmas and New Year's and Fourth of July, different types of services. But I do believe God wants to speak to our hearts here today. And I believe if you will allow God if you will allow God and God's word to come into your heart and your life, God will meet you right here this morning. An anthem that arises from the ashes. September 14, 1814, a 35-year-old lawyer and amateur poet named Francis Scott Key penned the words to the poem, The Defense of Fort McHenry. After witnessing the bombardment of the fort by the British Royal Navy in the Baltimore Harbor. This was during the War of 1812. Key was inspired by that American flag that flew triumphantly above the fort during the American victory. He would later, as, as this poem would go on, this poem would be set to the tune of a very popular British song that's entitled To Anacreon in Heaven that was written by John Stafford Smith. It would later be renamed what we know as today as the Star Spangled Banner. And soon this refrain would become the very well-known American patriotic song. The Star Spangled Banner was recognized for official use by the United States Navy in 1889. And then it was President Woodrow Wilson that acknowledged it in 1916. But it wasn't until March the 3rd of 1931 that a congressional resolution was brought forth that would make the Star Spangled Banner our national anthem and President Herbert Hoover would sign that into law. Now, this anthem rings out virtually on a daily basis across our country either at a high school football or basketball game, a college sporting event, or a pro sporting event. It could be a gathering of, uh, uh, in a public uh, venue, or it could be a government ceremony. But virtually on a daily basis, this star-spangled banner rings out across this land. And upon its plane, emotions begin to rise Pride will begin to swell and patriotism stirs within the heart of every true American because it is our national anthem. It represents who we are. It represents what we are about. It defines us. It is our anthem. An anthem is simply a rousing or an uplifting song identified with a particular group, a body, or cause. That is why when we go to those sporting events or we are in those places and you begin to hear that if you have a, a deep love for this country, there's an emotion that begins to stir within your heart and a bit, a bit of pride begins to swell that you are a part of this great nation that we live in, the United States of America. I am for one glad to be in this country on this day where I can still freely worship the God that I serve and I can come and get Gather in a gathering like this, and I can call upon the Lord. Samson, his life is defined by both strength and weakness. His birth is announced by an angel. His life is blessed beyond measure, and he is given strength like no other human being has ever seen. He is a constant threat to the Philistines, but he also plays a very dangerous game of cat and mouse with the Spirit of God. We have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
They were chosen young men along with Daniel to serve in the Babylonian kingdom under Nebuchadnezzar. Because, as Daniel 1 and 4 tells us, because they were children in whom was no blemish, they were well favored, they were skillful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge, understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace. They were some pretty good dudes. They were some pretty good guys. They had all of this going for them. And in both instances in our scripture reading here this morning, we find not only Samson, but we find these three Hebrew children in the very lowest points of their lives. Samson is grinding away in, in the, the prison house. This was something that was generally reserved for an ox or a mule that would grind in a prison house. But no, they're bringing Samson. Samson down, the Philistines have captured him, and now he is being treated as simply an animal that is grinding away in the prison house. A man that had so much strength and so much ability and so much going for him now is at the very lowest point of his life, grinding away in the prison house. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Loving God and serving God and living for their God, keeping their heart and their mind pure from the things of this world with a great desire to represent their God. They find themselves standing at the door of a fiery furnace ready to be cast to what would presumably be their death. But now we find them answering the king and saying, King, it really doesn't matter what the plan you have for my life because I serve a God and I believe I have trusted a God that if that's what he chooses for me to do I'll do that but king I've got to keep my allegiance unto my God Samson and the three Hebrew children when given their opportunity they declare their allegiance to God and from the impossible state and the ashes of their life they rise up to bring an anthem unto the Lord 2016 will be a year remembered as a great time of triumphs in which we reached a number of milestones and we accomplished a number of goals. See how CLC has been blessed to see continued growth, deeper commitment, stronger unity, and a zeal for revival like we have never seen before. I feel it in the atmosphere when I come into the house of the Lord. When I gather in this place with all you precious people, I feel the presence of God, and I feel a hard hunger for God to do something not only in your life but in the surrounding areas of your life and in your community and in your family. I feel that there is that desire that is there, and I feel that zeal that burns within us. I will tell you the only limit to the scope of growth and revival in this church is we ourselves. We will limit and we will, we will put a, a cap on the growth and what God wants to do here. But if we will somehow find a way to get out of God's way and get in tune with God and get in line with God and get in the understanding of what God has set for this church, we will see revival like we have never seen before. We have seen continued blessings through our sacrificial giving to missions programs locally, nationally, and worldwide. And today we understand that that is the heartbeat of God. We will not, we will not in any way back down from giving to missions programs. And we will passionately support missions all throughout because God has blessed this church. 2016, a banner year for us giving to missions and giving to the work of of what is reaching out into this world. I will tell you this right now. This community needs this church. This community. Your family needs this church. You need this church. I want our hyphen and our students to stand right now. The continued development of our hyphen and student ministries will play a vital role in the long-term success 
of this church. Listen to me when I tell you what you are doing for God and what you put your mind to and the things that you put your focus around, it will play a vital role in the success of Christian Life Center. Your talents are needed. Your abilities are needed. Your faithfulness is needed. Your commitment to God is needed as young people, as, as people that are setting a, a tone for their life. It is imperative that you get busy about the business of building God's kingdom. We do not need students that are led by prayer. What do you mean we don't need students that are being led by prayer? I will tell you, we need students that lead in prayer. We need students that will step up today and say, I'm not going to wait for somebody else to lead me to a place in God. I'm going to get there by my own. I'm going to push myself to a place where I get a commitment, where I get a relationship with God, where I say, God, whether anybody else in this house does it or not, I as a student or I as a hyphen member, I am going to make up in my my mind, God, that I am going to be led to you in prayer. You have to be. I will tell you, young people, you need to be some of the first ones that will lead us in prayer. When it's called prayer time before church, when we have 930 on Sunday morning and 7 o'clock on Wednesday night, I will implore you, do everything you can to be here for prayer time. Develop that relationship with God. Develop that heart that longs for a, a commitment to God. God, and you will only get that through a vibrant prayer life. You may be seated. Programs that make this a great church to be part of include a very dynamic children's ministry. If you're on the children's staff, would you stand? You teach. You help out on a Wednesday night. You help out on a Sunday. You work in the nursery, wherever you're at. Understand. Let's give these ones a round of applause. Understand. I want you to know the role that you play in the success of 2017 as teachers and helpers and leaders and ministers to our young children is vital. And it is important that when you go down there each and every week that you go down there full of prayer, full of the Holy Ghost, full of God's the, the divine and the intervention in your life that you can somehow reach to the kids that you're ministering to on a weekly basis. You may be seated. Our outreach team, if you're on the outreach team or in the East End ministry, please stand to your feet this morning. Understand. Understand this. Every Bible study you teach, every time you go down into the East End and you show up and nobody else shows up that night, don't look at that as a failure. Don't look at that as a night that you've wasted or that you have, you have just uh, spent your time and, and, and nothing come of it. I will tell you this, that God honors your faithfulness. God honors your commitment to reach out into the East End ministry. God honors your commitment to Bible studies and outreach into this community and to the people that so much need to hear. I told it before, but this community needs this church and if it's going to happen, it's going to be through outreach. It's going to be through ministries that go beyond the walls of this church and it impacts the community we live in. Thank you very much. If you're part of the music team or the praise team, would you stand? There's a high calling in being part of a music and praise team. Understand that God has chosen you God has blessed you and anointed you with talents and abilities to help lead us into the presence of the Lord, to help guide us into the presence of God. There's many times we'll come into this place and we really won't feel like getting with it. But oh, if you have been prayed up and if you have sought God and if you have went after God with all of your heart and even on a Wednesday night you've said, oh God, I'm going to pour myself into this because somebody's going to show up there tonight and they're going to need your presence. I would encourage you music and praise team. Seek after God with all your heart. Seek after God with everything that's within you. Because you play a vital role in the success of this church, you may be seated. Our Helping Hands Ministry, if you're part of the Helping Hands Ministry, would you stand? This is the hands and the feet of God. These people are taking 
compassion. They're taking love. They're taking kindness. They're taking concern into the homes of those that can't be here on a regular basis, into the nursing homes of people that are shut in, and they can't have the privilege that we have to be in the house of God. And these people are extending themselves. They're taking their lives, and they're investing into the lives of many that may never have the opportunity to, again, attend a church service, but they're a part of this church. They're not forgotten. They're not just left alone out there, but we've got people that are reaching into their lives and caring about them and looking after them. And I will tell you, Helping Hands Ministry team, that you are a vital and important role to the success of this church. You may be seated. There are many, many opportunities in this church. There are senior events that you can be part of that are a great fellowship opportunity. There are core events and family projects that you can be part of that make Christian Life Center a great place for you and your family to grow in God. There's countless avenues that will promote unity of your heart, your soul, and your mind, and your relationship with God. Christian Life Center is a wonderful place for you to be and when allowed, CLC is the place that your life has the opportunity to grow spiritually and your relationship to become stronger. But it has to be allowed. 2016 was a banner year for so many, many great things. 2016 will also be remembered as a time of unmatched sorrow. Each individual story here this morning varies in its connection to our beloved pastor. And the collective bond that we share here this morning suffered a blow that not only was unexpected, but deeply painful and, yes, very confusing. And I stand here today and tell you I don't know why. There are questions that will elude us for the rest of our lives and we will not have an answer to. We will not understand. We will not know. For the past 82 days, we, the church, have either been Samson in the prison house or the three Hebrew boys standing at the door of the fiery furnace. We're at a low point in our life. We're at a point where we're living in the ashes of everything that has happened around us. But I am here to tell you this morning that from the midst of the ashes of our lives, there is an anthem that is being raised. I am here to tell you one thing for sure, that there is an anthem that is stirring in the heart of Christian Life Center. There is a song that is beginning to well up within the heart of so many in the house of God that is saying, oh, though the things of life may be hard to understand, and though the pressures of life are, are, are about me, and though these last 82 days have lived in a fog, I will will tell you this this morning, dear God, that I have come to lift up an anthem of praise to you because you're worthy. You're worthy. If this has been an attempt from the enemy to destroy us, it will not succeed. If this has been an attempt from the enemy to tear us down or to tear us apart or to separate us, I will tell you today, it will not succeed. Romans, the 8th chapter, verse number 28, simply says, And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God. How many loves God in this place today? Come on, how many loves God in this place today? To them who are the called according to to his purpose. If you are here this morning, you are called to a purpose in Christ. 
You say, I'm from out of town. I'm just here with family. I'm just visiting. I'm just, I just come with a friend this morning. I will tell you this. God has called you to a purpose for his kingdom. It's not by chance or it's not just, uh, just by season that you are here. But you are here by a divine will of God. And God is choosing you to place his purpose within your life so that you can be beneficial for the kingdom of God. God is, not, God is not required to give you the details in order for his plan to be revealed in your life. God doesn't have to tell you how it's going to work out today. God doesn't have to show up on your doorstep and bring the blueprints and say, you know, this is how everything's going to work out. But what God will do is he'll show up in your life and he'll say, listen, put your faith and your trust in me. Put your hand in the hand of a man, of a man that was nail scarred for your life. And if you will trust in me, I'll bring my plan into your, your life and you'll see it unveiled and unwrapped and, and, and unfolded right before your eyes. But many times God won't give you the details and the fine points of that. You have to walk in faith. You have to trust in God. Romans 8 31 says, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, if God be for us, who can be against us? It's a question. It's not a statement. That's a question. If God is for us, can somebody answer me in this house this morning? If God is out in front of us, who possibly in their right mind would want to stand and challenge the King of kings and the Lord of lords to try to get to us? Who in their right mind would want to say, I'm going through God and I'm going to tear them down? Understand, the only reason God is not before us is if we don't put him there. If we allow the junk of this world to clutter our lives and we allow the things of this world to, to, to cloud our minds, we get God out of the place that he is supposed to be in our life and we are vulnerable to the attack of the enemy. But if God is before us, who can be against us? Nothing is greater than the God we serve. Nothing is greater than the God we serve. Verses number 37 through 39, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, for I am convinced, for I am positive, for I am confident, for I am certain that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor the things I'm living in right now, or what's coming down the road, it doesn't matter how high the mountain gets, or how low the valley would be, it doesn't matter if it's a creature from another planet, nothing is going to be able to separate me from the love of Christ Jesus our Lord. I am telling you here today, if you get the right mindset, you get the right perspective about your relationship with God, God has great designs and plans for your life. Not only will you be able to conquer, but the word tells us that you are more than a conqueror. The only thing that can separate you from your God is what you allow to come between you. I will echo the words of Carl Boberg's 1885 poem this morning. You know it better as a song, but the poem reads out, Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. I wonder if we've forgotten just how great God is. I wonder this morning, I wonder if in the turmoil of life and the uncertainty of the days that we go through, if we have somehow forgotten just how great our God is when the doctor's report is bad, how great thou art. When the flood of doubt arises in your mind, I will tell you how great God thou art. When the fear you have outweighs all the faith in your life, I will tell you, God, how 
how great thou art. When the mountain that you're climbing seems to get taller with every step, I will still stand and say, oh God, how great thou art. There is not a scenario in this life where we can't come to the point and simply say, how great thou art. How great thou art. An anthem, a song, a praise that arises from the ashes. My anthem will be that of the words of David and also of the prophet Micah. David is recorded in Psalms 34 verse number 1 that simply says, I will bless the Lord at all times. It doesn't say, and it's a good thing, it doesn't say, I will bless the Lord when the Buckeyes win their playoff game. Thank God it doesn't say that. It doesn't say, I'm going to bless God when I get to work and I found out I got a raise. It doesn't say, I'm going to bless the Lord, God, uh, when I get that report from the doctor and everything's clear and everything's good. No, the writer says, I am going to bless the Lord at all times, whether the report is good or bad, whether the, the, the outlook is, is bleak or not. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. It's an anthem that's going to ring from the depth of my soul through the ashes that I'm living in right now. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall the hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. When you come into this house, it's important that you praise God. Because listen, when we join that force together, when we interlock our praise together in this place, when we come together as a unified body, lifting up that voice of praise unto the God, to the Lord that we serve, all we do is we make God bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh, we're going to magnify him together. We're going to praise his name. Micah, Micah 7, 7 and 8 simply says, Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Can I tell you this morning, there are some of you that sat in this house and you have been praying and praying and praying and praying. And you've been asking God for understanding. You've been seeking God for direction. You've been seeking God for some source of strength or some source of hope. And you, you come into this place today and in the back of your mind you're saying, Oh, God is not hearing me. God's not hearing me. I'm praying these prayers, God, and I feel alone and I feel left out. God, the, the pressures of life are surrounding me. God, why don't you hear me? hear me but all oh, the prophet Micah tells us my God will hear me rejoice not against me take note what he says listen here enemy rejoice not against me oh mine enemy when I fall I shall arise when I said in darkness, how many feels like they've been in a darkness? Come on, in this place, how many feels like your life has been in a place of uncertainty and you haven't found a place? You feel like you're just being covered by the ashes of your situation and you feel like you're being overwhelmed by the cares of this life and the things of this world are just crushing in on you prophet tells us don't rejoice against me don't get too happy yet enemy don't get too excited yet enemy I may have fallen but there's an anthem that is springing up within my soul there's a song that's rising up within me there's a praise that's boiling up in my body that I'm going to bring to the God that I serve I would ask you today as we stand in this place I would ask you today I would ask you to seek God while that he can be found 2000 2016 has passed us. We have at our footsteps, at the doorstep, a brand new year to do something miraculous for God. And I would ask you, are you going to let an anthem begin to stir in your soul and begin to be lifted up unto the God that you serve? Come on. 
Come on, all across this place. Come on, all across this place. Take a minute to evaluate your life. Have you given God all the praise that he's worthy of here yet today? Have you done everything you can in worshiping God in this house? We're going to leave in just a little while. But, oh, I would encourage you, start this year with an anthem of praise. Start this year rising from the ashes and offering that unto God. Come on, would you do that? Come on, would you do that this morning? Come on. Sing to the Lord. Clap your hands. Make a joyful noise. Blow the trumpet.
you in the name of Jesus today. So upon the confession of your faith and your willingness to be identified with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You are good all the time. to baptize you in the name of Jesus today. So upon the confession of your faith and your willingness to be identified with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Shout for the victory. Shout for the victory. Shout. Oh. Come on, come on. Shout for the victory. 